Welcome back to First in Preparedness, and today we're going to introduce the highly controversial subject of first aid kits and how does it apply to your preparedness plan. Now, just the first disclaimer, I am not a medical professional. However, I do have the privilege of being married to a nurse practitioner that has a lot more medical knowledge than I do. And with that, I also have a great brain to pick in terms of what is needed in a first aid kit. So let's get started. Obviously, you see several different types of first aid kits sitting on this table, and each of them has their own specific purpose. But let's talk about this, the off-the-shelf first aid kit. Now, in your preparedness plan, do you want to go with an off-the-shelf first aid kit? Well, let's discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of going with an off-the-shelf first aid kit. First, a an off-the-shelf first aid kit is going to have several different items in it. It's going to cover a lot of different injuries, burns, scrapes, cuts, things of that nature. But there is a disadvantage to these. They're usually very limited in their scope of what they can treat and the quantity of each of those items in that first aid kit. Now, let's talk about building your own first aid kit and what those advantages are. Well, the advantages are obviously going to be you can stock your first aid kit with just about any specialized item you want, and you can usually stock it in a much higher quantity. But the drawback to that is obviously the cost. Now, if you look at the cost, you know, starting out and you want to go build your own first aid kit. Well, the good news is you're probably going to buy a lot of that one thing. Disadvantages, its upfront cost is going to be more but you can then take more of that item and spread it across several different first aid kits. And preparedness is going to usually require you to have specialized first aid kits for any given situation. Now, going with that, each of these kind of first aid kits on the table here serve a different purpose. I'm just gonna briefly touch on what each of those are. So this one is my home trauma kit basically has a complete IFAC in it, plus some additional pressure bandages, things for burns, things that would happen around the house, you know, and we'll cover everything from, you know, a major cut to gunshot wounds. It's not really a Band-Aid first aid kit. This is more for catastrophic injury. Over here, we have an IFAC. This is the one I carry in my car. Um, it's not the one that's on a battle belt or anything like that, but it, it does have everything that a IFAC has, and then it's also been supplemented with some additional pressure bandages, um, emergency blankets, triangle bandages, some stuff for mechanical injury. Over here, we have a first day or a backpacking first aid kit. Now, this is a kit that I bought. Oh, God, I don't even want to know. It's probably been 23, 30 years ago that I bought this thing, and it sits in my backpack for hiking. It's obviously tuned more towards those activities, cuts, scrapes, mechanical injuries, burns, um, medications for, you know, ibuprofen, things of that nature. Next, we have this. This is my son's pack level uh, base camp kit. This can treat pretty much almost anything. It has diagnostic equipment, um, also has, you know, stuff for burns, sprains, breaks, cuts, just about anything you're going to have out in the wilderness, this thing will cover. Next, I have my true shit hits the fan if I have to get out of Dodge medical kit. Uh, this thing can do everything. All of these can do, plus could even do some minor surgery if needed to. Um, this is my shit hits the fan kit. So, when we go about the strategy of first aid kits, you have to think about what specialized items you have. You know, this off-the-shelf kit, yes, it will treat most minor cuts and injuries and things of that nature. But what happens if you have a slightly worse injury? Like, let's say you maybe get into a slight chainsaw accident, or let's say an air compressor falls on your big toe and tears your toenail in half. Ask me how I know about that. I'll show you a picture. So what happens when we need a little bit more than this can supply, but it's not at that threshold where I have to go to the hospital. Well, that's where the supplemental kits come in. 
So if you're just getting started in your preparedness journey and you're starting off with first aid, the first thing that I would do is, yes, purchase an off-the-shelf kit just to get you started. And in these next videos that I'm going to discuss, I'm going to discuss items that you should have on hand or you should at least supplement your first aid kit with. Now, I've been at this for a long time. There are definitely items that I purchased that are totally worthless. And there are items that I now find absolutely invaluable. In the next video, we're going to discuss what to buy and what not to buy. I can tell you right now, there's a bunch of stuff that's expensive that's not good. Um, with that, thank you for tuning in again here to First in Preparedness and joining us for this highly controversial subject of first aid. And as always, if you are enjoying our content, please like and subscribe. And as always, hit the bell to be notified.